first question is, is maybe a, an easy one. What's the f last record that you bought? Uh, amazing Irish band called The Gloaming. G-L-O-A-M-I-N-G. They're, they're this group of incredible Irish musicians and one incredible New York musician. I think he's from New York. He's American anyway. And uh, the background is traditional Irish music, but they're presenting it in a very contemporary and very beautiful way. So, uh, was this um, what appealed to you? The, this combination? I know the guys. I know. I know. I I know them, and and. and they're some of my favourite singers. Uh, well, the lead singer, Earlo Leonard, is one of my all-time favourite singers in the world. And uh, the musicians are just unbelievable. And it, it's it's a very special record. What, what is it about this singer that um, appeals to you this much? Um, his, his background is in very ancient Irish singing uh, in the Irish language. And that's his background, but he's a very contemporary man. And... Uh, he's very sophisticated values in the way that he presents his work. He's an incredible singer. He's been singing and recording since he was about 12. Uh, and um, I think, for me, he's the most important singer in the Irish language. Okay. Are they in the original Irish language? Or yeah, or? Okay. some of them. I think there are one or two songs in English as well, but his main background as a singer singing in the Irish language. Okay. Um, well, this is an album uh, that is very much in line with, with the music you, you make yourself. Um, do you also buy records that, that venture out uh, into other areas? Oh yeah, sure. I mean, I, I, yeah. I, 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 don't buy, I, do, I don't buy records by singer-songwriters. <laughs> I don't buy much rock and roll. I don't buy any... Uh, I don't buy much hip hop really uh, or dance music, but I listen to a lot of jazz. I listen to a lot of uh, like North African music, music from Mali, okay. um, some Irish music, some blues. If a folk thing catches me every now and then, a rock and roll record comes along that I love. Um, yeah, it's pretty wide. It's. It, it, my interest is wide, but it's not about genres. It's, it's something has to really grab me. It could be, it could be a singer. It could be the sound of someone's voice. It could be like Melody Gardot, for example. Do you know Melody Gardot? No. Melody Gardot. I think she's from Chicago, but I have a feeling she's got some French background. Uh, and I, the first time I heard her voice was like, oh my god, I gotta have her, you know. And uh, it's if I get a feeling, I want the record. Well, that, I'm uh, starting with the, uh, talking about the records because um, for your new record, you said the love for albums or for records has disappeared or, or is uh, slowly disappearing. Um, could you explain this? Is this maybe because of the uh, rise in new media and, and the way music is consumed? Well, you belong to a generation of people, who've, many of whom have probably never bought a record. I mean, you probably know people your age who have never bought a record, never bought a CD. Uh, so how are they experiencing music? They're experiencing it from the cloud, from the internet, and they're hearing a song by a band, or they're seeing something on YouTube, you know? And so this, this diminishes the whole concept of a record as a body of work, like an art exhibition. Mm -hmm which is what a record is to me. It's like an, it's an exhibit of art. It is a time when a, a singer or a band disappear for a year or two years and they work to create not just one song, not two songs, but maybe 20 songs and they narrow it down to 12 or 15. And they work hard to make each song as perfect as it can be. And then they decide which songs to bring together. And then they choose the studio, and then they go to the studio, and they spend days, weeks, years in the studio. And at the end of it, then they 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 talk to a designer who helps them create a package. And it's a very beautiful process. Um, and at the end of it, at the end of the whole process, you have a body of work that represents maybe two years of a person's life or of a band's life. Mm -hmm. 
And to me, still, that's how I want my work to be presented. That's, it still is precious to me. Um, and that's how I want to experience other people's work as well. I've never listened to one song on Spotify. I've never bought anything on iTunes. I want to walk into Concerto in Amsterdam. I want to stand amongst other people in a shop and I want to look through albums and CDs. And uh, I want to choose a body of work by an artist or different artists um, and to feel a connection with those people through that body of work. That maybe that means nothing to somebody who's 22 who just downloads something from the internet, but it means everything to me. But surely then, when you listen to an album, there are some favorites and, and less favorite songs. Um, so you... Yes, but I decide what the favorites are. Okay. I decide what the favorites are by connecting with the overall body of work. And of course, you know, even in my favorite albums, there are tracks I like more than others. But if Van Morrison had decided to just release one track on YouTube, sure. I might never have gotten to hear Astral Weeks. Okay. Um, well, looking back then to uh, to when you started out uh, with music, which I, I believe was at a quite a young age, has your approach to this uh, then then changed at all, or has it always been this um, emphasis on on the whole body of work? Ah, oh, no. It's, it's yeah. It's been changing since. Uh, it really changed for me in 1998, which was the last time I, I made an album for directly with a major label. I did an album called Salty Heaven, which was released by uh, Sony um, in Ireland. And um, when I was dropped from that after only three months, it, it, it really broke my heart because I'd worked so hard to make the record happen. And that was when I became an independent artist and began going down the road of selling my records uh, myself at my gigs and online and, and doing these little distribution deals with like V2 here in Holland, right. which is a great record company, by the way. And um, so that's all changing all the time. And I have no problem with change and I have no problem with progress right. as long as change is progress. Uh, but for me, the change from someone buying a CD or an album to someone just downloading something from Spotify. That is change, but it's not progress. It's not progress. What's the difference now? The difference is that I can't eat. The difference is that I have to pay my bills the same as a plumber. If somebody is coming to fix something in your house, you know, the person who does the job will expect to get paid for it. You know, um, to me, Spotify is the devil. It's the enemy, um, and everything, all of it. I, I, I just, I'm just not interested in it. I just, it bores me. Um, I'm still excited by old vinyl, by new vinyl. Uh, I'm still excited whenever someone I love uh, makes a CD, like this CD that I bought. You asked me about the CD that mm -hmm. I bought. There was some stuff of theirs available on YouTube. I didn't even look at it. I didn't want it because I wanted to wait. Part of the thing about records is waiting. Anticipation? It's waiting, it's the anticipation, it's looking forward to. Um, to the, and, and, and I remember that when I was a 14-year-old waiting to go to the shop to buy Abbey Road. Right. 